I'm in the middle of refactoring a reasonably large application and I find myself in the somewhat rare situation of being granted essentially as much time as I need to refactor things however I would like. Of course, that means I am going to be making things more reactive and declarative. And whilst I can't show you the code base directly, I figured this would be a good opportunity to show some of the key ideas you might use to make an imperative style Angular application more declarative. And there are two Karen inspired rules you can follow to get in that declarative mindset. Rule number one is to make sure things never change. And rule number two is to always speak to the manager. The application I am working on is very typical of imperative style Angular code bases. We might have a component that works something like this. There are a bunch of class members that hold some state, or maybe they are off in their own service or managed with some state management library. It doesn't really matter. The key problem is that we have these variables that hold values and we change those by reassigning them imperatively throughout the life of the application. For example, we might have a class member to hold some data which might be undefined initially, or in this case, it is just an empty array. We fetch that data in the ng on init hook and then change the value of the my data class member by reassigning it. This is specifically what I mean about not changing things. Reassigning the value of this class member is what makes it imperative. How we get this data doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's synchronous or if it comes from a promise or an observable or anything else. The problem is that we are reassigning the value of the my data class member. This creates a data flow that looks something like this. Then if we had something derived from my data, we would also need to make sure to update that as well. This is not declarative because both of these values are being changed in ways that are not defined upfront in its declaration. We cannot understand the definition of these entities in our application unless we trace through all of the potential code pathways and build up a mental model of how it can change. In this case, we would need to search for my data to see that it is being set in the ng on init after the data from get data has loaded. Now let's take a look at another common situation that demonstrates why we will need our second rule, always speak to the manager. We might have an event binding in the template that calls a method, that method maybe calls a service to get some data, does some stuff with it, and then imperatively updates some state. Again, since this is being imperatively reassigned at some point, to understand what this entity in our application is, we need to trace through all the code pathways that imperatively set it. After examining those code pathways, we know that an event binding in the template updates this value, or at least we know that until we forget about it, but maybe there are other methods that will cause the value to update in some currently unknown ways. The definition of the thing is dispersed throughout the application, and that is the nature of imperative style code. With declarative style code, the definition of things are in one place, the declaration of the thing. The data flow of this same situation coded with a declarative style would look more like this. This is a good example of what I often find frustrating about this idea of declarative code being an overcomplication and to just keep it simple. Writing code declaratively is keeping it simple. So how do we go about using our rules to refactor this to a declarative style then? We can start with our first rule, don't change things. These class members that are being imperatively set are a great place to start. We take all of these class members that represent the state for this component and we make them declarative. We need to make it possible to define everything about what a particular class member is and how its value can change over time within the declaration of that class member. Making something declarative is about as easy as it gets because the only real requirement is that you don't ever reassign its value after its initial declaration. In fact, our my data example is already declarative as long as my data is actually just an empty array that never changes. The tricky part is that we probably do want these values to change over time. So we need to use some kind of reactive mechanism that allows the values to change without actually reassigning the variable itself. That reactive mechanism might be RxJS, or it might be signals, or it might be a combination of those things, or it might be something else entirely. In the case of my data, this is quite straightforward because the values that it can be over time are just the values the observable get data returns. So instead of having our ng on init subscribe to the observable and imperatively change my data, we can just have my data be that observable stream. This tells us that my data is the stream of values from the observable returned when we call get data with this.id. 
Now this is declarative and the value can still change over time. Everything we need to know about what my data is and how it can change is now contained in its declaration. Then we get to the other benefit of using a reactive mechanism, and that is that it allows us to declaratively define other things that depend on that reactive value. For our filtered data, we can now do this. Now there is no need to manually detect when my data changes and imperatively set the filtered data. It will automatically be recalculated when whatever it depends on changes, in this case my data, and how that value is calculated is contained entirely within the declaration of filtered data. I've used RxJS in this case, but for the refactor I am doing, I'm actually doing most, but not all, of the declarative refactoring purely with signals. With signals, this example would look something like this. This covers one of the main aspects of the declarative refactor, where we are dealing with initialization code. But how do we handle the situations where we have event bindings in the template that trigger a method that updates some value? This is where we need to have the mindset of speaking to the manager. A good example here might be that we have a button in the template that allows us to clear the current filters. The imperative way to think about this would be to trigger some method that will handle resetting the filter, maybe by reassigning filtered data like this. The declarative way of thinking is that we just update the filter that is applied. We don't actually change the filtered data itself, and then anything that depends on that filter value will automatically update. So instead, we might set a signal or next a subject with the new filter state. Keep in mind, this is actually an imperative action. If we set a signal or next a subject, we have no way of telling in that signal or subject's declaration how its values are going to be set. This is sort of just a limitation of Angular and most frameworks. They can't really be fully declarative. But the key point is that everything after this point is declarative. Everything that depends on this value will automatically recalculate whenever it changes. Our filtered data, for example, might be calculated like this. An important flow to keep in mind here when thinking declaratively is to think like a Karen and go above the thing you are trying to change. If you want to update the filtered data, you don't just try to update the filtered data directly, you talk to its manager. You go above the filtered data and change the thing that it depends on to calculate itself. The imperative thing at the very top of the data flow. Generally, these imperative style updates will happen at the top and then everything that flows on from that is calculated declaratively. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to leave a like or subscribe before you go. If your name is actually Karen, I'm sorry, and I hope to see you back here for the next one.